London, and I think uh, London looks a lot better to me right now. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if everything pans out well, we could be meeting in London next year. I mean, depending on, on a lot of factors that are quite difficult to predict at the moment, but there is a fair chance that we could have an actual physical conference next year. So that should be nice. Okay, I think it's Julio, where are you? Julio, are you are you with us? Yes, yes. Here I am. Oh, here you are. Here you are. Okay. Uh, so I guess that if you want to start your presentation, you can just share your screen and yeah. um, and go ahead. It's okay. Yes. Yes, we can see your, your screen. Okay, half an hour. What, what's the the time schedule for the presentation? Well, if you if you could make it in half an hour, that'd be great. But if you maybe um, less, I try well, to maybe look. okay. Well, well, 35 or 40 minutes could be acceptable. No longer than that, but just to give uh, 40 me. minutes is okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, can I start or I have to wait some seconds? I don't no, know. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, let me to, to say to you hello and uh, it's okay, it's good to see you all uh, one, one time uh, per, per two years, it's okay, but um, I'm going to present a new paper um, and this, um, this paper is entitled uh, Reconciling CEV and the VAR in Active Portfolio Management, a new frontier. This is a joint work with uh, Jack Lucchetti, Michaela Nicolaou, myself, of course, and uh, Luca Riccetti. And uh, the presentation of uh, this paper is um, a sort of a continuum, continuum in the time in which I presented the preceding works um, in the Gretel conference. So this is a traditional meeting for me and for this uh, type of topic uh, in, um, in which I, I am involved too. So in 2011, I presented the first paper that was uh, published in the Journal of Banking and Finance in 2012. So in 2011, we presented uh, the, the first paper of mine and Luca Riccetti. The second paper was presented in um, Oklahoma City, always, uh, always in the Gretel Conference. This was uh, published uh, some year later in 2029. And I hope that uh, in 2021, this is the um, new um, the new history, the new the continuum of the, this type um, of a job, and uh, I added some authors, and then, uh, Jack Lucchetti and Michaela Nicolao are, um, are, um, are, are were added to to myself and Luca Riccetti, and we would like to present the. The new, uh, the new, uh, the new approach and um, and the um, following history uh, about the preceding papers. So the idea is that uh, we investigate about the risk return relationship uh, regarding active portfolios. As we know, uh, active portfolios are those portfolios that uh, try to perform better than a benchmark portfolio. So in terms of uh, uh, risk and the return. We uh, actually try to uh, to uh, obtain a greater return than the benchmark and less risk. Then we focus in uh, on the two restriction about the uh, tracking error volatility. Uh, this is the analytical definition, and the value at risk. These are two different measures of risk in which we have uh, uh, the risk relative to a benchmark. This is a quadratic form in which we try to um, invest in a portfolio which is um, uh, close to the benchmark if the, the tracking error volatility is uh, low or 
we can um, we can invest far from the benchmark if this measure is uh, higher. And we have also the value at risk. This is another measure of risk. This is um, this is a not symmetric, uh, as we know, measure of risk. This is uh, this is very very uh, used in literature, in financial literature, of course. And we try to set to proper constraints uh, on these two measures in order to uh, establish if they are uh, um, compatible. Uh, of course, uh, this signifies that uh, we can impose a TEV restriction and a VIR uh, restriction, which uh, could be um, satisfied together or not. So this is the notion of compatibility, um, of course. If uh, this uh, compatibility is uh, guaranteed, we can um, analyze uh, different aspects uh, about uh, these types of constraints and the um, active portfolio strategy that manager could, uh, um, could, um, could make in uh, this context. Third, we focus on the trade-off which uh, naturally uh, arises when we impose uh, this type of restrictions. So uh, the idea is that we try to, um, to maintain these measures uh, uh, the less possible to the less possible value, values uh, assignable. So the idea is um, to maintain the TEV under control and the same is for the VAR. For we, um, after we, um, we introduced this, uh, this type of analysis, we are able to define a new portfolio frontier in the usual space uh, given by the portfolio risk and the portfolio return. And finally, we provide some economic and financial implication to, uh, the, to the result of our job. This is the uh, table of contents of this presentation, of course. Yes. We, uh, we work uh, on uh, some basic assumption, of course, as, uh, as usual. So we have um, geometric analysis in the usual uh, risk uh, risk uh, portfolio and the return of portfolio space. We have uh, uh, hand risky assets. So this signifies we, we, don't, um, we don't use uh, um, the riskless uh, activity. So all the activities, we, all the assets we use in our analysis as a positive variance, if you want. So the, there are hand risky uh, portfolios or assets. We have uh, the possibility to perform short sales, so this is unlimited. We have the standard framework of the, quadrat the quadratic utility function, and so the normal distributed return. So this is uh, an approach that uh, um, goes directly into the traditional uh, history about the portfolio frontiers, starting from the Markowitz, 1959. This is, uh, this is very, 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 very famous approach, maybe the most important. Then in 1992, we have uh, um, an update made by Roll in which the, the frontier of portfolio is uh, uh, obtained by minimizing the um, tracking error volatility given a mean constraint. Then we have another approach, is the, the one um, provided by Julian in uh, 2003 in which he derived a frontier in which he minimized the uh, T uh, the tracking error volatility frontier given um, an, another, uh, a constraint of, uh, of full invested portfolio and uh, a given uh, return value. And then we have the, fi the final reference to which we're, from which we start our analysis, which is given by Alexander and Batista 2008, and they um, produce a portfolio frontier which is uh, uh, which is uh, dependent on the uh, VAR uh, constraint, which is uh, imposed to the analysis. The idea is uh, to have uh, one geometric or graphical uh, situation like the two which uh, are reported here in this. Um, 
in this slide. So the idea is that we have the well-known Markowitz frontier, which is given by this hyperbola, okay? We have, oh, sorry. We have the role frontier, 1992. This is another hyperbola, but the minim, uh, here is uh, the total risk of portfolio is minimized. In this case, uh, the tracking error volatility is minimized. Take into consideration that the horizontal distance between the two uh, boundaries is a constant for each level of, um, of asset uh, portfolio returns. This horizontal distance is known as the efficiency loss. So the idea is that each portfolio, each portfolio which, is, uh, which lies on the MTF frontier as an efficiency loss, which is constant for each level of uh, portfolio return. So the efficiency loss is calculated over the, ben the, the benchmark frontier, which is given by the Markowitz mean variance frontier, because uh, all the portfolio located on this boundary are, for, uh, by definition, the most efficient in terms of uh, risk and return. The third portfolio, the CTF, the Constraint Tracking Error Frontier, which is given by Jorion, is a sort of an egg, if you, if you look at this uh, plot, which expands starting from the benchmark. The idea is uh, very, very simple, if you want. Ima imagine that the distance between uh, the benchmark and the frontier is a sort of radius, okay? The more long is the radius, the more is the value imposed to the tracking error. So the idea is if the tracking error is very, very strict, we have a frontier that lie around the benchmark. Conversely, if the uh, TEV is relaxed, so the measure is uh, greater than the previous measure, okay, we expand this, uh, this egg, and we have a frontier which is larger than in the previous case. So, in this case, we have two different situations. In the first, we have a stringent tab. So the idea is that the egg is around the benchmark. In the second case, we have the stringer uh, value at risk. This signifies that the, in the intercept of this fourth frontier, which is the constrained VAR frontier, Alexander and Batista 2008. So the, um, the greater is the um, intercept here, the most stringent is the VAR. So in the case of stringent VAR, we have an intercept which is superior to the previous case. So we, we um, I use these uh, two plots in order to uh, highlight the difference to have a very, very stringent tab or stringent VAR. In this, in this plot, I highlight also the portfolio K. The portfolio K is a peculiar portfolio which lies exactly in the tangency between the CTF and the CVF. This is the, um, this is the central portfolio in our analysis because uh, if I can reach this position on the plane, this signifies that I am able to obtain for each given, for the given level of uh, tracking error volatility, I can obtain the minimum possible VAR. So this is the idea, okay? Of course, observing these two plots, uh, a natural trade-off uh, should emerge because we can not reduce the VAR uh, without uh, increasing the TEV and vice versa. This signifies that if I, if I can expand the TEV, I can expand this frontier, so I can reach the tangency in correspondence of a VAR which is inferior than the preceding one, okay? So if the intercept augments, so the VAR uh, diminishes. This is the, um, this is the relationship for you, okay? Uh, on the, um, conversely, if uh, I reduce uh, the TAV, I can augment the VAR. So the idea is that uh, if I augment the tracking error volatility, I can reduce the efficiency loss. I repeat, the efficiency loss is the horizontal distance between the position and uh, um, the, correspo the corresponding portfolio with the same return on the Markowitz frontier. So the idea is how can I manage these two restrictions about the TAV and the VAR in order to obtain something which is a, a sort of a, um, efficient frontier, frontier in terms of uh, tracking error volatility and uh, value at risk. 
The idea is that uh, we, we would like to derive um, a frontier, okay? This uh, frontier is uh, called the Risk ba Balancing Frontier. The acronym is RBF, okay? This is a minimum, uh, this is the solution of a minimum um, problem um, under some constraints. So the idea is to minimize the value at risk under the constraint of a, a given tracking error volatility and the full invest portfolio, okay? This is uh, the, um, the, the problem we try to solve. And after uh, some complicated algebra, we will obtain the solution which are depicted, uh, which are shown here in the final part of this slide. So the idea is that a solution, an, an analytic solution exists and uh, this is given by this um, vector, which is um, um, the vector of optimal portfolio weights. This is the, these are the, the two shadow prices uh, deriving by using the um, standard method of uh, Lagrange. So the, the idea is to obtain the dynamics between the value at risk and the tracking error by uh, analyzing the first shadow price. And uh, we will obtain this, uh, uh, this final solution. First uh, consideration or remarks about this uh, solution. So the first is that we found that the um, omega star solution of our problem consists of a linear combination of three well-known portfolios, namely the global minimum variance portfolio. This is the portfolio uh, placed exactly here is the minimum variance portfolio is the minimum in terms of a overall variance. The second is the optimal sharp ratio portfolio. Uh, this portfolio all, um, also lies on the mean variance frontier by Marquis. Imagine that we have the straight line in which we have a um, we have a constant sharp ratio, so the tangent is about is uh, it should be about here in the, on this arc. So this is this, this portfolio lies approximately here. Okay, this is the portfolio on the mean variance frontier that has the maximum uh, sharp index available, and finally the third portfolio is the benchmark. So the first result is uh, given by uh, this linear combination. The second is that the, the weights uh, X1, X2, and X3, that weights the three uh, above mentioned portfolio, are, through, are three weights that uh, once we collect it into a vector, they belong to R3 in the, in the entire space, and they sum up to one. So the idea is that uh, these are no three weights that uh, lies between zero and one. They are free to vary, but necessarily they have, they have to sum to one. Third, the benchmark for portfolio is reached clearly when the weights are given by um, respectively zero, zero, and one. So if we zero times uh, uh, omega t, zero times uh, uh, omega Q plus the benchmark returns exactly the benchmark. This is, a, uh, this is not true for the other two portfolios. So in order to obtain this weight or this weight, we have to, um, we have to obtain different triples because the triple one, zero, zero, and zero, one, zero are not available because these two portfolio uh, are not lying on the new uh, frontier we define, but they belong to the mean, um, the mean variance frontier. I'm going to explain the concept later. Um, five, uh, the solution of our problem does not strictly depend on the level of tracking error, which is imposed, imposed to manager. This is uh, crucial because uh, the effect of the tracking error volatility imposed uh, to manager is not direct to the, the solution of the problem, but it, it uh, works uh, in, in a not direct method. So we have to, um, to analyze um, separately the concept. 
finally, this solution suggests that no closed form defin definition is available for the new frontier we determine. So we have to use uh, numerical techniques. Uh, specifically, we will use the uh, BFGF uh, algorithm in order to obtain the frontier. So the idea is uh, what about uh, our frontier? From the graphical point of view, this is the solution. So the idea is that we have something which necessarily starts from the benchmark and then have uh, this uh, follows this pattern. So we have a, a curved shape. We have a point in which uh, the minimum risk is uh, reached. Then we have a point in which the new frontier is a tangent to the Markowitz frontier and then this uh, continues uh, uh, and uh, goes uh, to infinity. The idea is that imagine you, we have a sort of uh, different eggs that enlarge when uh, we uh, augment the value of the table, we consider all the possible tangencies with different lines. So the idea is that uh, to obtain something like that. So this is the RBF frontier. This is the new, uh, the novelty uh, proposed by us in terms of a portfolio frontiers. So, uh, these are the standard the mean variance frontier, mean tracking error frontier, the constrained tracking error frontier, and the constrained VIR frontier, which belongs to the standard literature uh, about portfolio frontiers. So the properties, I just uh, commented uh, a little, but the idea is that uh, this po the, the RBF, so sorry, the RBF, the black, the, the thick black line, okay, contains all the portfolio which, has, um, which have the minimum, uh, um, the minimum value at risk available for each uh, level imposed to the tracking error volatility. This is the um, clearly the definition of this uh, frontier. Second, this is an envelope because uh, it uh, considers and uh, it is the joint uh, um, jointly um, it's given by all the tangencies um, between the oval frontier and the linear frontier. So if you observe the portfolio K, this is uh, just to give an example, necessarily belongs to this frontier. So this, um, all the tangents, all the uh, available tangencies between this oval boundary and this linear boundary uh, form the envelope, which is uh, uh, the new frontier. Necessarily, this frontier starts from the benchmark in which the tracking error volatility is clearly zero. Of course, if the tracking error is uh, uh, tracking error volatility is imposed to be zero, clearly the uh, distance from the benchmark is uh, null. So the idea is that the frontier necessarily uh, starts here. This is also clearly the um, the point in which the tracking error is uh, is null is zero. The tangency point between the more, uh, mean variance frontier. Um, with the um, risk balancing frontier in, is instead the minimum value at risk uh, portfolio. So the idea is that uh, we start from the benchmark, we have, uh, we follow this uh, sort of a uh, curve pattern, and then we are tangent to the mean variance frontier. In this case, the line is the, is the line with the, um, with a higher um, intercept, or if you want, with the minimum VAR, because uh, uh, if we continue to go on the on the left hand side with respect to the Markowitz frontier, we we have a a, a, a plane in which um, the portfolio are not admissible. So the idea is the last. Uh, portfolio available in this case is, is a properly the pro portfolio M, which is given by the tangents in between the two frontiers. We also have a minimum variance portfolio in the RBF. This is uh, given by portfolio Z here. This is this should be clear. Is the minimum variance? It's okay. 
the, the function uh, uh, portfolio return as a function of the values imposed to the tracking error volatility is monotonic. So the idea is that if I augment the uh, tracking error volatility, the admissible or tolerable uh, tracking error volatility, I, I always uh, I always augment the, uh, the portfolio return. If you follow this line, if we augment the tracking error volatility, so if we expand this frontier, of course, we obtain a level of the portfolio return, which is always greater. Okay, so the idea is that the function that links the tracking error volatility to the portfolio um, return is monotonic. Okay. Oops. Seven, we, um, we analyzed also uh, a peculiar case in which the, re the benchmark return is superior to the return of the tangency portfolio M. In this case, the, uh, the, frontier, the frontier is always increasing. So it starts from the minimum variance and increases to the benchmark. Consider that if you start from the benchmark, you have a decreasing, always a decreasing level. So the function remains monotonic, of course. But in this case, the returns is diminished when you augment the tracking error volatility. So we have a, a sort of a reverse case than the standard case I presented before, but the pro all the properties are uh, are always guaranteed. So uh, the only difference is that in this case the function in the standard case the function the function is uh, strictly increasing. In this case, it's strictly decreasing. This is the only difference. So this is a peculiar case we discovered uh, during the analysis we have uh, conducted on the, this subject. And finally, this is uh, really important because uh, this situation uh, full of uh, peculiar cases uh, you have to take into account for different aspects uh, in the analysis. In, the, in this context, uh, we were lucky because uh, the shape of the frontier, so the idea that it starts from the benchmark, it takes uh, a curve and then have the um, properties that I listed before, this shape does not depend on the confidence um, level about the managers. And um, of course, they, um, these properties then uh, do not depend on the uh, slope of the horizontal axis of the oval uh, frontier. So the idea is that uh, this mechanism works uh, the same way in all the context regarding the slopes of the linear uh, CVS, CVF frontier or the horizontal axis the slopes about the oval frontier. Of course, I already say that um, the, um, the RBF is obtained numerically. This is the simple algorithm I, uh, we used to, in order to obtain the, the plot I showed you before. So the idea is to, in, uh, to have an increment uh, given by an arbitrary and, uh, um, and numerically small increment H the TAV, so the idea is starting from zero, or if, if you want from the benchmark, increment progressively the tracking error volatility and then minimize the value at risk at each step. So the idea, of, the idea is that the algorithm proceed uh, um, in, uh, by summarizing, uh, following these uh, uh, five steps. So start to impose the value T0 uh, to the TEV, calculate the midpoint on the arc uh, J0 and J1. So uh, calculate the midpoint about the returns. So the idea is uh, necessarily the tangency between uh, the oval frontier and the linear frontier happens uh, along this arc J0, J1, okay? So the idea is to calculate the return here. The, this is the maximum return given the TEV. This is the minimum risk given the TEV. 
So calculate the returns of these two of this couple of portfolio start from the uh, midpoint and then iterate until you will obtain the position K. This is basically the idea. Okay, find the minimum VAR is, uh, uh, of course, is to find the portfolio K, K, determine the coordinate of such portfolio. Uh, remember that these coordinates are strictly dependent on the, the tracking error volatility that uh, was uh, already imposed. And then increase the, the, the TV by H and start and proceed again. This is the algorithm that uh, permits, permitted us to uh, uh, draw the curve on the plot. Some, uh, oh, 10 minutes is okay. Uh, some uh, economic and uh, financial uh, implication of our analysis just uh, to conclude. Uh, first of all, from the economic point of view, it's uh, good to appreciate that uh, the RBF contains only Pareto efficient portfolio intense in theory uh, of tracking error volatility and uh, value at risk. So the idea that is uh, that uh, each uh, position which is different from uh, those lying on the new defined frontiers um, are situation in which all the uh, tracking error volatility or the value at risk is greater. So we have um, a situation which is uh, clearly worse than the one of um, we obtain all along our frontier. Second, if we augment the uh, tracking error volatility or at the same way we, we reduce the value at risk, clearly the efficiency loss uh, could be uh, diminished. This is very, very important. So the idea is, um, okay, I can, uh, um, I can augment, for example, the level of tolerable risk of my portfolio. This could lead managers to reduce the overall risk about the portfolio. So the idea is that augmenting the tracking error volatility could lead to a redu reduction of the portfolio risk or variance. The same is by uh, making the VAR more uh, stringent, okay? We can obtain the same effect. Uh, third, it's okay, the relationship uh, um, that links the um, level of um, the restriction on the value at risk and the level of the restriction on the tracking error volatility uh, could be also positive. This uh, could sound strange because uh, this belongs to this uh, part of the curve. I'm going to show you. The idea is that uh, when, uh, when I run from B to M, I will augment the tracking error volatility and uh, I will reduce uh, progressively the value at risk until I will reach the minimum value at risk here to portfolio M. Well, then if I will continue, the, the tracking error volatility continues to augment and the same is for the value at risk. This could sound very, very strange, but the idea is that uh, these are extreme positions that managers could follow um, in order to simply augment the expected return. So the idea is that, okay, uh, from M onwards, the idea is to augment the return and also uh, I'm, I'm ready to accept uh, a greater overall risk and a greater relative risk just to uh, augment the uh, expectation about the portfolio return. Um, finally, we, um, we imagine um, a very, very simple scenario about uh, the two figures that um, manage uh, portfolios in, um, in the real life. So we have on the one hand the managers and the, on the other hand we have the investors, okay? As we, as we know, the utility function of the managers is positively related to the um, difference between the portfolio uh, on, the, on the frontier on which they invest uh, less the uh, benchmark return and the function is negatively related to the increasing uh, tracking error. 
um, usually uh, managers tend to select risky portfolios. This is uh, uh, due to um, basically two reasons. First, uh, if I select a risky portfolio, maybe or almost surely, uh, the risky portfolio uh, guarantees a high um, a return which is uh, clearly higher than the benchmark. And second, if the, the performance of, of my portfolio is good, maybe I can also receive a performance fee um, because I was a good manager, because I selected a good portfolio in terms of um, obtaining or of the final return uh, I obtained. For the case of the investor, the, situa the, uh, the situation is, um, is quite the same, but they have uh, a positive relationship with, uh, uh, with the return of portfolio, and they try to minimize the, uh, the value at risk. Okay, so the idea is that uh, on the one hand, we have managers that try to select or, te or tend to select risky portfolio, and uh, uh, on the other hand, we have investors that tend to reduce the, re um, the portfolio risk. This uh, clearly creates a natural trade off, and the solution is given by the power of the relative power of uh, one subject. Uh, if compared with uh, the power of the of the other, so this is basically the idea we we, we, we would like to uh, we try to um, to give by the use of our new frontier. Finally, uh, we are all also uh, we have the intention to produce a, a short empirical analysis. Uh, um, for our, for our work, so the idea is that the, the work is not already finished, so you have to be patient, and, uh, and I cannot present a proper empirical analysis right now, but in the paper, of course, uh, this will appear immediately, or I hope, in um, the next days. Uh, before finish, uh, I would like to say that um, all the um, all the properties, uh, all the results, and all the frontiers uh, we have analyzed in this paper are um, have been obtained by uh, by using Gretel, and uh, we have a fully uh, code uh, written in Gretel in order to produce all the results. Uh, in the um, of this paper second we will um, put in a, um, in a web page the um, the code uh, once we we finish the paper and uh, finish the um, the analysis so uh, every everybody is uh, able to repeat <coughs> our analysis because the code will be available uh, i just um, i just finished i'm in time i suppose so thank you all bye all comments clearly are welcome thank you thank you julio uh okay. you can unshare your screen now yeah yeah uh, one second uh, i don't try uh, oh it is done uh i can't okay okay well the the button is disappeared okay. you need to find you need to find your zoom window okay well anyway oh, okay. okay i i i did okay. i did it. sorry uh, i i was able to do it as as host oh okay okay so um if anyone has comments or observations on this uh then or otherwise we can uh, okay if there are no reactions then we might uh, I, I i have a oh, small oh yeah, question okay 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 go, go ahead Sven. so it, it wasn't entirely clear to me what was sort of the the hardest part in terms of uh implementing this in Gretel, or what was the central part in the sense that was it basically to put all this stuff it into the optimizer, or um, and 
then or you did not it was not a likelihood based approach if i if i get it correctly right so was basically having an objective function and then letting uh, yeah, the, yeah 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 the optimization. yeah of course of course yeah i i didn't publish the equation because uh, it was um, okay thank you jack okay I didn't publish the objective function um, on the slide because uh, it, it's a very complicated and uh, from the analytical, the analytical point of view. That the idea is that imagine we have the equation of the arc J0, J1. So this is a monotonic function. So we can write this, uh, this function. And uh, so the idea is uh, to, to find uh, on that arc, the minimum possible, uh, the, the portfolio in which the um, value at risk is clearly minimized, okay? So the idea is uh, in augment the TEV and minimize that function. In the slides are uh, called uh, simply value at risk with I, okay? Okay. So the, the code is available. If, if you want, I can uh, I can show you the equation now if you want, but uh, I, I don't know. It's an, it's an... Uh, no, I, I think we're running a little late for that. Uh, one, one, one quick question for Julio. Uh, yeah. Uh, how would uh, how would Newton Raphson do for this problem? Hmm. Did he try that at all? No, I didn't try, I must confess. <laughs> but uh, no, we... we we went directly on the BFGS uh, maximization, uh, but it, it, we it, can try. Thank you for the suggestion, of course. Uh, it looks nice and smooth. It looks nice and smooth, so maybe Newton Rapson would work well. Probably you're right, and uh, I, I will follow your suggestion, and uh, yeah. I'm going to try very yeah. hard, but uh, the, at the moment, I must confess that... Uh, the, 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 the trouble there is that at the moment, we don't have analytical derivatives for this. So, you know, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, BFGS was the, you know, quickest way to get this done. But of course, yeah, it's worth, it's worth, a, it's worth a shot. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll uh, take also into account that uh, we are um, developing, developing all the algebra right now in these days. So <laughs> the, at the moment in uh, which we uh, proceed with a simulation in order to have a plot of course, because the idea is to produce the, the figure, which, which is the visual central part of the paper. At the moment, um, all the derivatives are uh, were uh, unavailable, okay? Now I can, I can say that something uh, about uh, the analytical derivatives is, um, is uh, emerged, okay? And so we can, uh, we can try uh, to use an alternative uh, of our approach, of course. Okay, but uh, just from this night, if I remember well, I obtained some results this night. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. So I guess this is it. And uh, okay, we. Let's, we yeah. Let's okay. wait. Let's have a ten-minute break. I would say. Let's start at 25, okay? Okay. So the we'll... open discussion, everybody who wants to push forward the, <laughs> the limits of Gretel and so on. Okay, okay. So, okay, let's, let's restart at 25, okay? <laughs>